Good evening. My name is Craig Blanchett, and I am a health coach. It's my uh, privilege. We've been going through the uh, the habits of health. Um, I wonder what that title means. I don't know. But Dr. A wrote this book, The Habits of Health, The Path to Permanent Weight Control. I don't know. It's a pretty big, pretty big claim. Permanent Weight Control and Optimal Health. And tonight, we are going through Chapter 9, which is Choose Wisely, Dr. A's Color Coded Shopping System. Uh, this particular chapter, I think, is Chapters 9 and 10 are really where the rubber meets the road. Um, we have certain things that are like transactions, like to-do items, action items, actionable items. And this chapter is all about the action, right? We don't really deal with why or the motivation for change. This is all about eat this, not that. Do more of this, do less of that. It's the practical, practical things that if you don't know these things, how are you going to survive? How are you going to be as healthy as you want to be if you don't know the difference between blueberries and blackberries? I don't know. They're very different to your body. So we're going to review this chapter today. And what I'd like to do is have this be a little bit of a, uh, an interaction back and forth. And we'll just take it a couple pages at a time. And it uh, starts on page 93. And so if you have something that's... Um, that's jumping out to you on this first, this first little section there. It's all low glycemic foods for optimal health. Dr. Ray talks about, um, here's your rule of thumb. He has a color-coded system. Dark green is the lowest glycemic. These are the foods that are best for weight loss and optimizing your health. Then we have light green. These are moderate glycemic foods, foods to be eaten in moderation. So it's not never, but it's, it's being careful. And then we have the red zone. These are high glycemic, and he states that those are foods to be avoided. So um, if you avoid them, you don't have the effects that those will have on your blood sugar. And so um, anybody else have anything that jumped out from that first little section there about the, the different colors of the charts that they want to talk about? Who just joined us, by the way, on the iPhone? You just Her name's me. Anna. What's your name? Anna. Oh, hello, Anna. Welcome to the huddle. And Wendy just joined. Wendy? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She might be on, on mute or on the telephone. I don't see a Wendy here, but welcome, Wendy. And Wendy, welcome. iPhone 2. Oh, iPhone yeah. 2. iPhone 2, yep. And the 503 is Anna. Oh, okay. Right. Hey, Craig, can I maybe back up a few pages before we get to the color coded? Sh um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, which only, page? Because, only because I wanted to say that um, when I first read this, um, my shopping habits really changed because I was shopping the perimeter of the store rather than all of the other aisles and I had to I had a chance just because I needed to go down an aisle that I hadn't been down in months probably a year it was really foreign hmm. so you know as as and so that just reinforced you know the the fact that and, and at the time I had been kind of struggling with oh my gosh I'm finding myself derailing and then when I had to shop I had found myself in an aisle of the store I hadn't been in in a year. It was like, whoa, I guess I really have grown. Mm. So, you know, that whole idea of, of shop shopping the outside of the store as opposed to going up and down the aisles like I used to do, you find yourself making better choices. Yeah, that's great. You know, I've, I've done that. I go through and I look for people that are healthy. And then I look what's in their cart, and I'm like, hmm, okay, I need some more of that. You know, you look for people that are, they look fit, look healthy, they're at a healthy weight. I always, another thing that I look for, which is a, a litmus test, I know you guys have heard about it, but look for people that carry one of these with them everywhere they go. And then say, I wonder how healthy they are. Look for the, at the water bottle, and then look. I will say 
most of the time, people that are intentional about carrying water are healthier than people that aren't intentional about carrying water. Who knew? I mean, obviously, it's not just magic. It's the intention behind why they have it that makes a difference. So don't get hurt. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so let's move, move along here. Um, you know, ready to shop. Um, uh, Dr. A talks about fresh is better than frozen, canned, or in a jar. And natural is better than processed, right? And processed foods are foods that are, um, that are not in their original state and have a reduction in their nutrients and an increase in their calories. That's the, what he's determining as processed foods. So they're, they're, they taste great, but there's not a lot of nutrition there. There's just a lot of calories. That's processed foods. Because um, there are some things that are processed, like olive oil, for example. Obviously, the processing of olives to oil is, isn't to make it unhealthy. So it's not just about the processing. It's what kind of processing is done. And then um, he talks about different types of fresh foods and our idea is to, to have foods that are closer to the original. Um, if you were to grow a garden, and our, we're having a, um, a house built, and one of the things that we decided to do is to have a garden now. So we're going to have some place in our backyard where we're going to grow tomatoes, grow some low glycemic foods that we like. And it will be fun, you know, caring for and you know, making these things, uh, watering them and all that stuff. Uh, so my son, he's, he's a biology major and he's really excited about it now, actually. So Kim, you had your hand raised. Go for it. Oh, I had a, a phrase um, highlighted in my book just uh, that stood out to me um, on page 94, just that, you know, it says, in essence, we'll be using food to heal you instead of medicine. And for me, especially the first time I went through that, I, I didn't look at food that way, you know, and so... Um, and just even, even the words like functional and dysfunctional when it comes to food, um, really stood out to me as well. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's all part of an exciting new discipline called nutritional intervention, a much more power, a much more powerful medicine than any pharmaceutical I've ever seen. And it's the very basis of optimal health. Now, what's the interesting thing about nutritional intervention is um, prescriptions are very powerful and quick acting, but they come with a, a side effect. So they sort of like force your body to do something, and and there's a there's a downside to forcing your body. Whereas nutritional intervention works in concert with your body, and so there's no negative side effect to the nutritional intervention. The downside can be is that the effects might be slower to be seen, but there's no side effect and it's sustainable. Because uh, medication, you know, when you have a headache, it's not because you're low on ibuprofen, right? It's not, I don't have my RDA of ibuprofen today, and so that's why I have this headache, right? You think about that, your body's not, not um, deficient on ibuprofen, and that's why you have that headache. And so there's other things going on there. I knew you'd laugh at that, um, Diane. <laughs> Diane's a, a dietitian. We call her the rogue, and she calls herself the rogue dietitian. So she's she's a uh, cut from a little different cloth, but she is a dietitian. Um, and someone just said, "Yeah, it may be slower, but longer lasting." Exactly. So uh, we'll go through a couple more things here. Um, there's a little bit about natural process and organic. Is there really a difference? Uh, the answer, short answer is yes. Peanut butter, for example, natural peanut consists of peanuts and sometimes a bit of salt. That's it. We go, when we do peanuts, we actually go to the peanut grinder. You can do this. Uh, Carrie Armstrong, she's a coach from Spokane, and she makes her own peanut butter. And believe it or not, she uses peanuts in a blender. And that's it. So it's one ingredient. Now I go to Winco and I push the button and the peanuts turn into paste, right? And so it's just crushed peanut paste. And um, our family doesn't need anything but that nowadays. And so um, that's one thing that we do. So processed peanut, 
including most of the national brands, contains peanuts and salt, as well as sugar or high fructose corn syrup, along with other ingredients that are completely unnecessary and have a negative effect on your health. Not to mention that once you've gotten used to the real thing, the processed stuff tastes like plastic. My kids said that. I can't stand any. I had some GIF at school today, and it tasted like plastic. That's, that's exactly what they said. They didn't even read the book. Right? If, you, if you grew up in Tacoma, you grew up on Adams. Adams, yeah. Adams. Peanuts and a little bit of salt, and that's it. Yep, peanuts and salt. There you go. Yep. And so um, another thing that Dr. A talks about is a nine-inch plate where um, there was an actual – oh, I've got to find this. This was a great little um, – Somebody sent in a, um, uh, a, a picture. It's uh, Coach Amy from over in Spokane, and she has a plate that she made up, and her, um, her she had the deck of cards, she had the two batteries, and she had the tennis ball, and she took a picture of it. I'll show you guys the picture there. Can you share the screen? So this is what she has. And I thought, that's awesome. Take, I told her, take a picture and send it to me. And so she's got the nine-inch plate, and then she's got the batteries, the deck of cards, and the, and the tennis ball there of where you should be at. So that's on page 98 as well. And that's one of the things that sometimes we get so geeked out about, you know, if you're doing Weight Watchers, it's counting these points. And if you're doing – you know, you're counting the calories and doing all this kind of work. Dr. A's like, if it's not, if it's not nimble and portable, then um, you, you might not do it. And so he's like, let's just make it super simple. Let's use some colors, things like that. Um, oh, you want to see that again? Let me share the screen again here. Yeah, this is the little screen there for the veggies. And the um, two AA batteries. He talks about this in this chapter here. And, um, and then the tennis ball. Tennis ball should be your, where your carbs go. Your, um, I believe the protein is the deck of cards. And then the batteries is your fat. Okay. So, anyway. so, so, yeah, so we got some vegetables here. Um, on page 99, actually, I want to go to the um, fruits because the fruits are kind of usually a highlight. And so what I'd like you guys to do is everybody participate in this section and uh, name. So you, I'm gonna, I'll call on you. You'll, we'll unmute you, and you're going to name what's one low glycemic that's your favorite and what's one high glycemic fruit that's your favorite. So you identify the one. This is page 100. Super easy to remember for you coaches. Page 100 is the fruits, right? And so, so the, the thing is, is, what's one in the deep green that you know you love and now you know it's awesome? And what's some, one of the ones in the red that you're sad that's in the red because you love it? All right, Linda, why don't you go first? Okay, so, one of my favorites is avocados. Okay, avocados. There's what's your red? Oh, they give me a lot of energy. Yeah. And, um, one of the things that I'm probably saddest about, um, I guess, because that's uh, that's a fruit that my family loves is bananas. Bananas. Yeah, that's a common one. All right, Steph, you're Steph. up. Raspberries have always been my favorite, so that was lucky. And I used to love watermelon, but I realized it was like drinking sugar water. So, yep, yep. All right, Diane, you're up. Um, for me, I love cherries. I like them frozen. I'll eat them as a treat that way. Good call. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, blueberries is a real disappointment for me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get that a lot. Literally, I get hate mail about this blueberry thing. When people hear me talking about blueberries, literally, I've gotten messages. Blueberries, what are you talking about? It's like the blueberry lobby, the blueberry, blueberry mafia. So be careful going that one around. <laughs> All right, Carol, how about you? Avocados would be the greatest as far as low, and my watermelon is 
really hard to give up. Yeah. Yep. And you don't have to. You just have to think about if I eat it, I now know it's a 76, and that's going to raise my blood sugar. So it's not like you can never have it, but you can never have it and expect it not to spike your blood sugar. That's, the, that's just the reality. That's not like it's evil. It's not evil or good. It's just 76. <laughs> Do I see my goodness? Martin, you're up. My favorite is free if someone will go pick them for me. Who's which one? The free blackberries. If someone blackberries. Will pick for me. Yep. Um, and then probably grapes. Grapes. All right. How about you, Eileen? You're up. Uh, my favorite is um, avocado, but it's been said so many times. So I'll say uh, tomatoes. Tomato? Like tomatoes a lot. And um, uh, disappointed, but not surprised, mango. Love mangoes. Love that. Okay, Lorraine, you're up. Um, I'm going to be like Martin and say I love the blackberries. I do love avocados too, but boy, I was sad about the blueberries because we've got blueberry bushes all on this property yeah. and they're blooming right now. Yeah. And they are 53. They're barely over the 50. I mean, it's not going to kill you if you have a blueberry. If you have them frozen, I don't know, that might be a little harder to digest. What's that? What about a dried blueberry? Is there such a thing? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, oh yeah, they've dried everything. Debbie, you're up. Okay, I'm going to take avocado. I absolutely love it. And now it's even better knowing that it's only a 10. And then um, grapes. Mm -hmm. Grapes, grapes yeah. really bummed about that. One thing to be sure with avocados is avocados and olives are the two out of that list that do have more of the fat. calories coming from fat. And mm -hmm. so we have to be careful because they're very energy dense, so smaller amounts. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you'd eat just a straight avocado, but having some slices on your salad. Not a problem. Now, eating a straight tomato, green line. Go for it. Right? Because there's no fat in the tomato. So, how about you? I unmuted you, by the way. Oh, you did. I, sorry, I didn't realize you were asking me. Yes. Um, raspberries. I love raspberries. We've got some raspberry bushes out back. Uh -huh. And then uh, for the high one, watermelon, of course, but uh, pineapple, any of the melons, I love those. Yep, yep. Kim, you're up. You gonna do it? You got it. Okay. Um, for the low, I like grapefruit. Um, yeah. I, all of us would be another one, but um, and then for the high, um, pineapple. But it it was not a question in my mind that it would be high. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah, right. Exactly. How about the dried pineapple that I think has sugar? It's dipped in sugar or something. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome. Oh well, Kathy. Well, I have to say avocado, too. Mm -hmm. I love avocados. Yep. Um, and I could easily sit and eat a whole one. I know I shouldn't have yeah. a whole one at this point. But, yeah, we have blueberries in our backyard. I buy fresh blueberries. I love blueberries. Mm. I also love the grapes and watermelon, too. So I, yeah. I go easy on them at this point. Yep, yep, that's smart. All right, and is it Anna or no? iPhone 2, I can't remember your name. Uh, Wendy. Wendy, what's up? Yeah, yeah so what's your, what's your green and red? Um, the green would be raspberries. I love raspberries. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think the, there's a lot, several on the red, but um, I'll pick bananas. I really like bananas. Yeah. Bananas, yeah. Okay, Bob, you're up. Uh, well, I like lemons and limes. And that's the only fruit that I like. Oh, wow. So it's not an issue for me for the reds. There's a, there's a sparkling drink that I believe is, uh, has those two in it, lemon and lime, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what was your red? I don't like fruit. Oh, so, you, so you're good. So it's, I'm, it's not a challenge for me. All right. Okay. So those of you, let's see here, Anna's on the telephone. Let's see, do you have, do you have a book and are you, do you want to answer or join in? I don't have a book and I'm not watching the screen so I can't see, but I actually really like all of the good ones that you, yeah. everyone mentioned. 
Yes, and yes, I'm very yes. fond of fruit in general, so I'm disappointed to hear about blueberries and pineapple and watermelon. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much all of it, but yes. I don't eat it that much. So it's, yeah. it's not awesome. Thank but, you. Yeah. Good good to know you don't think about it. Yeah. Like, oh, it's fruit, it's healthy. Right. It's very sugary actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a bunch of ones that are in the middle too. Apples, nectarines, peaches, pears, strawberries, oranges, apricots dried, plums and figs. Those are all occasional, you know, in moderation. You know, your deep green, I love the fact that grapefruit made the list, made the cut. I mean, 25 grapefruit, bring it. I love grapefruit. And for me, um, I like bananas. Bananas are pretty good. Pineapple, pretty great. My wife would say kiwi, I think. But anyway, so that's going to take us through a portion. I've got some... I want to jump in. We're getting um, right at the top of the hour. So let's all play the Kahoot. So right now, what you need to do is pull out your phone or your tablet, or you can open another window, you know, on your computer screen and have them side by side. But you want to go to Kahoot. It's K-A-H. It's K-A-Hoot. Kahoot.it. Let me share my screen so you guys get the um, the game um, eight one 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 three three eight one 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 three three and that is the game and so log in we've got I think twelve or thirteen questions tonight so go to your so for those of you that are on just the telephone this won't be advantage because you'll need to see the question on the screen so unfortunately um, you'll just have to listen to it. i'll read them off so you guys can at least hear the answers and somebody named me i don't know who that is one of you though wise people rogue rd Nice. I knew that is. Lorraine, is that everybody? Let's see, we have how many people on the chat? 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Anybody else? Kahoot.it. Game pin is 811. 8111133. All right, Eileen is in. Anybody else want to play? Okay, Debbie, are you in there? Yep. Kim, are you in there? She must be, yep. Okay, Stephen. Oh, he's radar nut, probably. Okay, so here we go. Uh, first question coming up. You guys all ready? Ooh, Linda got in there right at the buzzer. Good job. Okay, here we go. And Lorraine, I'm glad I waited. Is anybody else I can wait? The more the merrier. Okay, so we got 11 out of 8. Oh, this is my first time playing. Do, what do I have to do? Your, your phone is going to become the remote control, and the question will be on the screen, and it will give you the four different options, and you use oh, your phone. So I can choose it. Okay. Yep. It's, it's totally fun, and there's, there's crazy prizes available. They're so crazy, they're like see-through. Like a trip to Hawaii? It's, you, you, some people have won a trip to Hawaii. Yep. All right, so here we go. Why were you getting kicked out? What's that? Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me see here. Resume, share. We got it. So here is one, four, eight. We've got 12 people, and here comes the first question. Um, are you ready? So, is it possible to drink too much water for a healthy person? True or false? You got 20 seconds total. Eight seconds left. So, you're going to push red for true or blue for false. The answer was false. For a healthy person, you can't drink too much water. You don't have to worry about it. If you have problems with your liver or kidneys, you could potentially have um, issues with too much water. But we don't have 
some people say, oh, if you drink too much water, it can hurt you. Only if you have a compromised uh, system. So don't worry about drinking too much water. The, the average really is 64 is minimum for all human beings on planet Earth. And then 80 is a nice average. Um, between 80 and 100 is a great, if it's hot, you know, you can go up to half your body weight in ounces. You can add, you know, but, um, oh, I have another question. I was going to give you the answer to that. So we'll keep going to the next question. So Debbie's in the lead, followed by Linda and Kim. And Eileen, the rookie, is in fourth place. Nice work. Pick the high glycemic fruit. Plums, nectarines, mango. Which one is the high glycemic fruit? It was mango. And so as we just saw on page 100, uh, that mangoes are a 51, and all the rest of those were below 50. So plums are 35, and nectarines are 30. Good job. Debbie has taken the lead. I don't remember who was in the lead last time, but anyway, that's who's in the lead right now. Soy is a legume and a plant-based protein source. True or false? This is all in from chapter 9, by the way. So soy is a legume and plant-based protein source. All right, the answer was true. Soy is a legume and it is a plant-based protein. One of the nice things about soy is that it's a complete protein, which is um, difficult to get in unless you're having um, dairy or meat products. All right, Kim still, oh, Kim took the lead. Look at that, we got, a, we got a race on our hands, folks. Thirst is a sufficient way to remind me to drink. True or false? Thirst is a sufficient way to remind me to drink. True or false? What if we want to change it? Sorry. You like? Okay. You had hot fingers. Oh. False. So Dr. A says that when your body is thirsty, it's now in a survival state that you need to drink before you're thirsty because your body's just telling you, hey, these things are not good, you're thirsty. So we want to be drinking on a regular basis, even when we're not, especially when we're not thirsty. Debbie, ooh, it's heavy. work. Okay, next one. The dark green charts are moderate glycemic. It should be eaten in moderation. They're focused on green vegetables. They facilitate reaching and maintaining an optimal weight or none of the above. The dark green charts. Moderate glycemic, facilitate reaching and maintaining a normal weight. That is the answer. The dark green didn't make charts that facilitate reaching and maintaining an optimal weight. Notice you didn't make that answer green. Well, I can't, I can't tell what color it's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, that's if you were paying real dollars. Where do you get on there? Lorraine, taking the lead. What's up? All right, next question. Low glycemic vegetables are not bell peppers. So low glycemic. So this would be basically what's a high glycemic one out of these? Bell peppers, squash, peas, or cucumber? This one catches people a lot. That's why I've had this on here. It is peas. Peas are considered a higher glycemic uh, vegetable. And that is from page... Uh, where are those little peas? Those peas are on page 99. And he, uh, Dr. Ellis says as a 50. So, and then squash, all of these other ones are 30 or less. 
Oh, you're good to go on this list. Me. Look at me. He's taking the lead. Who that is. All right. Using food to heal your body is called... It's called slower than prescriptions, but has no side effects. Nutritional intervention, smart, or all of the above. I just answered that wrong. Crap. The answer is all of the above. So no matter what you, it is called nutritional intervention, but it's also smart, and it's also slower than prescriptions, but doesn't have the negative side effects. So I'll give everybody that answered any of those the right answer. All right, me is still in the lead, followed by Kim, and Wendy is bringing up, look at you. <clears throat> Turkey breast and chicken breast have the same fat content. Turkey breast and chicken breast have the same fat content. True or false? It is false. And if you look on page, this comes. There's the meat. It's on page 102 and um, no, 103. Turkey breast is 18% fat, 6% saturated, and uh, chicken breast is 24 and 7. And uh, chicken breast with the skin is 36. And 10 of that is saturated. So there you go. It's 103. Next, pork loin is higher in fat than flank steak. True or false? Pork loin is higher in fat than flank steak. True or false? It is false. So pork loin, this is a surprising one, was 26% total fat, 9 saturated, and flank state is 44 and 19. So pork loin is actually on his list. We got buffalo, elk, venison, and then the next one is pork loin, followed by round steak, veal chop, Canadian bacon. So it's, um, it's one of the ones that's a little bit better for you as far as um, pork or beef. That's obviously, um, there's no chicken in there, no turkey. So that's why they call it not poultry, they call it meat. All right. Me, Barb, Kim, for second, third. Oatmeal is a low glycemic, healthy breakfast. True or false? Oatmeal is a low glycemic, healthy breakfast. Come on, over the answer. All right, so false. Oatmeal from steel cut oats is a glycemic index of 58. A lot of people think that they're eating healthy when they have a bowl of oatmeal with blueberries on it for breakfast and chased by a glass of orange juice. That, my friend, is cotton candy for the blood. So you may rethink your healthy breakfast if you're thinking about blood sugar and all that we're learning about blood sugars, um, you might want to go with something like uh, muesli, uh, buckwheat, all brand cereal. By the way, sourdough bread is a 48. Who's happy about that? I know I am. So, um, all right. The so Barb's in second. Me. Who is me, by the way? <laughs> should, um, I put you? should I put you? <laughs> yeah, good work. Okay, a couple more questions left. Cooking your foods al dente slows digestion. True or false? Al dente means not or under, a little undercooked. This wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to have al dente chicken, by the way. Because that would cause food poisoning. So um, it is a true statement that things have a little bit more fiber in foods that aren't cooked as much, that are a little undercooked. And raw vegetables have the most fiber, and so raw would be better as far as glycemic index, meaning it would be lower. All right, next question. Dr. A's color system 
red color is moderate glycemic, high glycemic, focused on red colored foods, none of the above. Dr. A's on Dr. A's color system. Yeah, the red is considered high glycemic and should be avoided. All right, that came on the very first page of this chapter there, page 93, um, almost towards the bottom there. All right, soy has naturally occurring phytonutrients that protect against heart disease and osteoporosis. Your screen. What's that? Can you guys see that still? Soy has a naturally occurring phytonutrients that protect against heart disease. Is my screen messing up? No, you guys can see that, right? Yeah, yeah. So that is true, and Dr. E talks about that in this chapter. All right, so Kim is now mustered back up to the front and taking over Martin. A long-term strategy is to combine higher and lower glycemic foods. Long-term strategy is to combine the high and the low glycemic foods to balance them. Is that true or false? Come on, people, don't be afraid to vote. It is true. Yeah. Ooh, four and four. Look at that. Yeah, Dr. A talks about uh, one of the ways that you can, you can, if you have some, like one of the things I was thinking about is Hawaiian chicken. So you've got protein, which is zero glycemic index, and lots of protein. And then you have the pineapple that goes on top. And so they do do a little bit of balancing on some of those. Um, I'm careful with those things, but there is some, he talks about that. All right, so I think we're getting close to the end here. A micro, what is a micro environment of health? Is it a tiny galaxy? Is it a small area that is clean? Is it something to do with ozone layer? Or is it a living area limiting your exposure to unhealthy things? A micro environment of health. And a living, oh, you guys all got that right. Good job. A living area limiting your exposure to unhealthy things. Yes. And so, Kim, wow, 11,000 points. And I do believe we have a winner tonight, folks. So, the trip for five to Hawaii goes to Kim Stewart. Yay. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the. Um, the game tonight. Anybody learn anything or something stick out to them that they want to share? It's just a little uh, follow up here before we end this thing. Now would be the time. Kim Stewart, what would you like? Did you really raise your hand and put it down? I was, yeah, I did actually. Um, I, as I was thinking and preparing for this chapter and, um, and just talking with clients and stuff this week, it, it made me think, I and mean, actually I think I might be talking about this and the huddle that I do is um, the right tool for the right purpose. You know, and I think this, this chapter is like a really critical tool for the long-term, you know, life, you know. And, and I was thinking, you know, how many people um, don't ever get beyond the five and one, right? And I, I just was thinking as far as tools, it's kind of like using your screwdriver as a hammer. You know, it might work kind of. Um, or a penny as like a screwdriver or something like that. You know, it's really hard to get a whole lot of progress. Um, um, yeah, it might, it might do kind of the job, but how much easier and, um, you know, how much better it can be when you use the right tool yeah. for the job. Well, and imagine you go into a situation where you have food. Trust me, you're going to have those in your future, right? And you're not on the five and one. So you don't have all this safety of these meal replacements that someone else has done the work for you. And you haven't read chapter nine. You got no chance, baby. Good yeah, luck. you don't have a tool. You don't have a tool. You don't have any idea. Pineapple, bring it on. I'm going to have a bowl of pineapple before I go to bed. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. How would you know any difference? So think about that as coaches and as for your own journey. You haven't taken, hopefully this inspires you to get into chapter nine a little bit and look at some of those color-coded things and study it. You know, chapter, uh, page 100 has some pretty good information on it. 
it's not comprehensive. It's not exhaustive, but it's got at least some of the popular fruits that we consume in America. And so whenever I ask for the fruit cup, instead of having the French fries, I say, what fruit's on it? Because quite frankly, if they have pineapple and that's all they're giving me, I'm taking the French fries. They're about the same, <laughs> right? And I like French fries. They love the same. So yeah, chapter 9 and chapter 10 are two like, if you, if you get two to five and one, and you expect to have any longevity, and you just haven't read one chapter in the book, hopefully you can, um, for, your, for yourself and for your clients, you can bring chapter 9 to life. Make it relevant. Make it interesting. When I did the whole thing, um, pick one in the deep green that you love and pick one in the red that you're sad about. I mean, how practical is that? Even if they go away with just two, I know this one's safe, and I know that one I love and I should stay away from. That don't empowers people. Anybody else have any comments? No? Was this fun? So you guys had a ball? Good. So we've got chapter eight next week, and chapter eight is called Dr. A's Healthy Eating System. And so it starts on page 87, and I would love for you guys to have a couple of highlights. It's a little shorter. Chapter 9 was longer. I'd love for you guys to have um, a few. You know, we're going to be talking about the insulin, low glycemic fuelings throughout the day. I'd love for you guys to have some highlights there to share next week, and we'll see you uh, next week at 6 p.m. So thanks, everybody, for all of your, for just being here and participating with us.